Hi everyone. So now in this session, we have been discussing in the previous sessions, we were discussing about expectations. So we'd start our discussion on random variables. So random variables, and then we said there are two types of random variables, discrete random variable, and there is continuous random variable. There are hybrid random variables also, but if you know what is a discrete random variable and what is a continuous random variable. So uh, you somehow will tackle the problems that involve the hybrid random variables also. So why are they important? We also address that question. So then we discussed what is called as a probability mass function. So probability mass function is defined for the discrete random variables. We're discussing about discrete random variables. We define probability mass function. So when we'll come to continuous random variable, there will define something called as probability density function, PDF. And then on top of that, we'll define one thing for both of these, which is common to both of these random variables, discrete as well as this continuous random variable. That is uh, cumulative distribution function, CDF. I have given a bit of details when we were doing that EDA, we we're doing explorer data analysis. At that time, I gave a brief definition of these, but now we are tackling them in detail. I think we uh, also saw different types of these variables, types of discrete random variables. In that we saw Bernoulli random variable, geometric <coughs> random variable, binomial random variable, and uniform. There are other types as well. So probably on demand, we'll look at these. Okay, and we'll tackle this thing separately. This thing will be tackled separately. Now we said that we have these things have distributions. Okay, uh, the distribution basically means uh, if these random values take a value. So what is the probability that it takes a certain value? Because there are higher prob higher uh, probabilities at, uh, on certain values, and there are uh, lesser probabilities at certain values. So that distribution gives an idea. So if you if you saw the random variable uniform random variable, there the distribution basically was everything was supposed to be equal because we had no prior knowledge. That was the assumption that we took in the discrete random variable. So once we moved to a binomial random variable, we saw some curve like this. So we saw something like this. So if it was something like this. Okay, and this was it. This was a distribution. So, what distribution gives you? Distribution gives you the idea. How is this probability? How is the, uh, the this probability mass PMF? For I'm talking about discrete random variables. How is this mass distributed on different values? Uh, and uh, the number of values you take in here. Let's suppose this x can take values one comma two comma three comma four, and you will see somehow like this a PMF of uh, binomial distribution will be somewhat like this. I think I have coded some of these things distribution for you. So as you uh, sort of memorize these things and have them in your mind. So how these distributions look like? Let me show you the code also. Okay. Let me just open the code files. I hope that this is visible. So if you see, just I have made some imports here. This matplotlib is for the plot, and this numpy is just for the numbers. And I have uh, also imported math library. So math contains some different uh, functions because you know that we need combinations and these permutations in here. So if you see, uh, the first thing that I have defined is a combination. So I have actually math also gives me combination, but I thought of defining it myself. So as to show you, like uh, you can start from that. So if you have this n c k, okay, that is basically equal to n factorial divided by n minus k factorial into k factorial, something like this. So that's what this function is. This this computes the combination. I hope the screen is visible. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Okay. That's why I'm saying you should keep your camera on so that I can see you guys. I can uh, uh, at least see the face expressions. Okay, this is what I'm defining. So this is the combinations. I'm just writing a function to define combination. Then you know the binomial distribution. So I said in the binomial distribution, in the binomial, there are two main important things. N is number of trials and P is the probability of success. In, uh, in binomial distribution, each of the trial is a Bernoulli uh, random variable. They take Bernoulli, it's a failure or success. I said there are different uh, scenarios in life where you do this. Okay, and we'll see that also. So uh, different life scenarios while you will, uh, in each trial, uh, you will basically uh, get either a failure or a success. And then you do such N trials. And we are saying that this follows what is called as a uh, binomial random variable and the distribution that it follows is called as binomial distribution and then we'll see that distribution also. So here if you see that I have given this value n I think it's here visible n is the input and p is uh, and the parameter and k is uh, the basically uh, how many of these I want how many successes I want that is the number of successes. So here if you see these parameters I have mentioned n is equal to 20 I'm making 20 trials and I'm saying p is equal to 0.7 the success probability is 0.7 and k values, if you see, I'm taking all the values. I'm taking the values from uh, 0 success, 1 success, 2, 3, 4. 
uh, till n plus 1 till uh, this 20 success because this range value basically will give me 0 to uh, I think 20 because it's ex it will exclude this n plus 1 it will exclude the last number so this basically will just generate np a range will generate 0 to a list of numbers and then what I am saying is I am calculating probabilities so this if you see is I am computing probabilities according to these k values okay I am computing basically this binomial of 20 comma 0 first then I am computing binomial of 20 comma 1 probability is same this thing p uh, remains constant because 0 0.7 is constant the only thing that is changed is k this 20 also remains constant because 20 is the number of trials and then I want to see what type of distribution it follows if I only make one trial if I only make two trials, if I make three trials four trials okay so how will it happen so what is the value that it will take so if I just run this code cell if I run this code cell so you can see this distribution okay now you can see that the value over here so how many trials are we making 20 trials you can see from 0 to 20 that's what he over here over here so we are making 0 till 20 trial so you see that the highest probability is this this is the highest probability and it's around like if you see it's around I think 14 it's around k is equal to 14 okay if you see the whole thing it's a distribution the distribution gives you a rough idea it gives you basically an idea uh, how are these values how are how are these uh, how that how does the random variable take values if you perform these experiments continuously okay then what's the value it will usually take okay so if you see the central tendency over here the tendency over here is like 14 okay if I just change the number of experiment let's suppose we'll change the number of experiments we'll change the number of trials that's supposed to 15 okay then you will see it over here okay and this is how binomial distribution is done on try if we can change probabilities also let's give it 0 0.5 0 0.5 probability and then you will see it like this okay that's what's what's called as a distribution so what in nutshell what's a distribution so distribution is nothing it gives an idea about a random variable so what is the what are the values that are taken by the variable so if you have to make a best guess about the variable you will say that the highest probability is this so 7 or 8 probably so if you have k is equal to 7 or 8 you get the highest probability that's these many number of, in 20 trials in 15 trials here so in 15 trials so maximum time the average number of times uh, so there is high probability that either 7 or 8 success you will get uh, among the 15 trials okay when the probability is 0.5 that is also intuitive also so intuitive means half the times it will be uh, success and half the time it uh, is a failure so it's uh, it makes sense to take the 7 and 8 because half the time if it's a failure half the time it's success so it feels a high probability will be this but there is also some probability of uh, this one also if you see it's a very slight probability so among these 20 trials only once you will succeed so that, that has very low probability among these 15 trials uh, you will have all the uh, 15 successes so that's very also that's very low if you see 14 but if you increase the probability if you see this if I increase the probability let's suppose of success to 0.9 okay so now you will see this graph will be somewhat different so now if you see almost uh, for 14 times uh, you will get uh, the probability 0.35 the more probability will be for this okay that is what this graph describes we are trying to read this binomial distribution so that's the distribution graph how these probabilities are distributed so this distribution if you see that's why I said in binomial distribution the parameters are only this n and p n and p basically mean n is the number of trials and p is the probability how much probability the success is there so this can be like this let's suppose India and Pakistan will play 100 matches. so now from the previous prior belief you know that there is a chance of 0.6 percent chance uh, for India to win and uh, uh, for 0.4 chance for India to lose okay this is India complement or India so now you can sort of uh, have in 100 matches what will happen so how many at average how many matches what will be the probability distribution so you can also figure out that by using the distributions is this clear is this clear from the graph nice yes sir so similarly we can also see uh, for this uh, geometric distribution so in the geometric distribution I give an example so in geometric distribution we try to see when we will get the first success okay so in the head center let's suppose you win some dollars when the head appears okay so let's suppose you have uh, the probability of success also there so now this is the K K means how many number of experiments will you do and uh, when will you get the first success okay that sort of thing we'll do and if you see in here this probability again is 0.5 now I, I'll choose this uh, choose a, a maximum number for the value of k how many of uh, numbers do you want okay so this means let's suppose k if k is equal 5 that basically means uh, after 5 trials you'll get the number okay 
let's suppose what I, what I can do is so I'll say if k is equal to 5 that means uh, if I am flipping a coin so it will be tail 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 and head so here I'll win my price okay uh, so if k is equal to 2 I'll say uh, that is when I'm uh, flipping the coin uh, it will be tail and then I'll get head so this is what a geometric variable means by the example I took that example so here the probability of getting a heads is p and probability of getting a tails is 1 minus p Similarly, in the formula, we wrote that if you, uh, if let's suppose we want, uh, if the uh, random variable takes the value five, so it will be uh, one minus p raised to power four because four times it's a failure, and at the end we'll get a success. Okay, in general, we write one minus p k minus one multiplied by p. That's the probability we write. So that's what I have written over here. If you see this function, if you see this function over here, so I'll just delete these. So if you see this function over here, so this function is nothing but just computing the probability. P and K are the parameters. So actually the parameter only, if you see over here, is this probability P and then K is uh, for what, uh, for the number of K, what is the probability you will get? So it is one minus P, K minus one, and then multiplied by P. So that's what is written here. That's what is this function returning. So now if this probability is 0.5, and I'm saying that start from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 till 10, and give me a distribution of all these values. So if, uh, what is the probability that I'll get in this, uh, not even zero. So technically zero is also possible, but it's a boundary case. So if I just flip uh, the coin one time, so uh, what's the probability that I'll ha get head? So if I now flip it two times, so now I'll get first tail and then head. Three times basically means I'll get tail tail and then third head. So what's the probability, if you see, I said that it follows what's called a sort of a geometric progression. So if I run this cell over here, so now you see this is the this is the graph. So it decreases geometrically. Okay, the maximum probability is that 0.5 because uh, the first time you get it is the, you have the highest probability to or doing that. Okay, then it decreases slowly. Okay, like this. Again, if I change this probability, if I change uh, say this probability to 0.8, now you will see that this gets changed. Okay, now you will see 0.8 is on the first. Uh, this is point eight, getting it, getting a success, and then slowly it decreases, and almost after like seven, it nearly becomes zero. It it it's not exactly zero, it's nearly zero because you'll still have some probability at the end, okay. And uh, let's suppose now if I if I have twenty of these, if I take this, so you'll still see the distribution is like this. Now I'll just make it a sensible number, something point four, so that you see this. Now you can see this. This probability distribution tells you a lot of things. Now you can just say, oh, uh, what's the probability that I'll get something greater than, let's suppose, 3. So k is equal to 3, what's the probability? You can just compute it from the probability distribution. So these are the distribution. Similarly, I have coded the distributions for uniform distribution and Bernoulli distribution. If I just run these, so you'll get something. Uniform means something like this. And uh, Bernoulli, you know that there are only two possibilities, the 0 and 1. Here I have uh, created equal probability. If I just remove this 0 0.5, so it will be, so this will be somewhat smaller. If it is uh, less, uh, if uh, one is less and one is more, so here we have created both of these. But if you see this uniform, you see a beautiful thing here. So uniform basically is like this: every every possible value from zero till one. Okay, so everything has uniform value. Okay, I have to adjust this uh, one over here because this I think is wrong scaling. This is wrong scaling. Okay, this probably do not take this as one. So this is not right scaling. We have to scale the values according because we have to make the computation of probability also. Okay, if there are n elements, the probability probably will be 1 uh, uh, divided by n plus 1, something like this. So how many of you understood distributions? By just these core examples, what these distributions give us? So they just give us a rough idea about what is basically happening if a process or if a real world phenomenon is following a random variable. It is following a distribution basically. Okay, then somewhat will get results around this. So you can make a guess around that. That is what a random distribution, random variable are. Uh, random variables are. A distribution is somewhat different from that. Okay, random variable is basically a function. A distribution it gives you an idea how this random variable behaves. Okay, behavior of the random variable. And then coming back to these expectations. Okay, now we'll come back to expectations and go with a question that we're doing. So now these distributions, if you see, they gave you some idea about different things. The first thing is they said, let's suppose they give you different properties, but you have to see the whole distribution. And uh, to construct distribution, you must know probability mass function. So whatever we had this for binomial probability uh, random variable, so we have this uh, 1 minus p to the power, let's suppose, uh, 1 minus p to the power k, something like this. We had nci, out of the n trials for i, 
so we'll have i and then we'll say p of n minus i something like this so this function basically was a probability mass function so when you know this probability mass function then from that you compute a distribution distribution is good enough if you know this probability mass function so what it does is so distribution basically gives you an intuition behind that you, uh, you are uh, getting a lot of details from the distribution now we wanted to sum up the numbers okay what basically we wanted we wanted some numbers by the help of which we can get to know about this random variable okay so again i'll tell you what distribution does i'll write that so we introduce random variables and their distribution so distributions gives you somewhat full information okay so now i want to have some uh, uh, suppose some two three numbers if i know these numbers i'll have enough knowledge about a random variable i have enough knowledge about that distribution in itself okay for distribution i mu i must know pmf and this pmf gives me the whole information about the random variable now what i want is i don't want to have this whole pmf or i don't want to have the whole uh, uh, range of numbers that a random variable takes i want to just have uh, what i can say uh, some uh, several sensory variables sensory variables which i'll call this is a term I had just invented. You won't find it in the book. So, so sensory variable, by, by that I mean if you give me those variables. So, I'll be able to tell you a lot of things about uh, the distribution that the, that the random variable follows. But let's suppose if you see the humans. So, there are some peculiar features in the humans. So, if you uh, tell me those things, I'll tell you who the, who the humans are. Let's suppose, uh, for example, if we speak about ethnicity. How are Kashmiris different from non-Kashmiris? Non okay. So first thing you will see, uh, Kashmiri folks, they grow beard. Okay, they have a usually higher volume of beard than other people who are from North Kashmir, who are, who are non-Kashmiri. Okay, this may not be general, but this is the feature. Okay, and then probably they are uh, a little bit uh, more taller than the average uh, what uh, non-Kashmiris are. Okay, from the stats I'm telling you. Okay, and these are the, these are some variables, some features. If I tell you these, you can you can easily uh, be able to you, you will be easily able to identify those things. Okay, you can say that oh, okay, these are the features that a Kashmiri has. Similarly, if I again you let's suppose among your friends, some of your friends have let's suppose if you have to identify a friend, you will say that if you play a blindfolded game, you can tell the properties of that friend and these sensory properties or maybe the variables and these are the uh, these are the variables which will somehow uniquely identify an individual okay it can it may not be those you that unique but it will give an idea similarly in uh, this uh, random variable or distributions we have some variables sensory variables so which will give us a rough idea okay about what this random variable is doing and uh, how basically this will behave in certain conditions and how if we fit this problem onto this what will be the output and things like that so for that we have different variables the first variable is expectation okay expectation basically is average okay and that's the first thing so if uh, i'm given numbers like say so let's suppose x1 to x2 till some xn so if somebody asks me what is the average of these numbers what average basically means so central tendency, I can just write it like this, xi, i goes from 1 to n, divided by n. Okay, this is the average, central, it gives me the central tendency. Okay, that, that's what this expectation again is. So expectation somehow is a central tendency or sometimes it's called as a uh, weighted average. Okay, because we assign weights to some things now. Okay, weighted average, it's also sometimes called as weighted average. This is not, these things are not equivalent. So they basically uh, tell you the same notion. Okay, but why do we, uh, why do we have these expectations uh, and these things? I think we cleared that up in the previous class. Similarly, so this expectation now, if you see this expectation of X, if you have a random variable X, that's how it's written. So what you will do is, you will just take it like this. You will say, what is the value of X and probability X is equal to X. Okay, you will multiply it by the PMF and you will get a central tendency of this. This is just one number. It will be a one number. It will be a one value. This right now, we're talking about discrete random variables. Similarly, we'll talk about uh, continuous random variables also. This is how expectations are defined. Let's suppose if we have number that takes values from xi, i goes from some one to k. That's how we define this expectation. Okay, I think everybody is with me. Okay, and now uh, the question that uh, in the previous uh, class that we were discussing, we'll, uh, we'll get to that. The question that we're discussing is that if you are in, uh, in an exam and you have to attempt question one and question two, that's what you have to attempt. Okay. Now the question is that what order uh, should you 
attempt these questions so that you get the maximum benefit. So benefit was uh, defined and we now we'll define more of the variables. So we said that there are two questions, that there is Q1 and there is Q2 questions. So what will you get is you, let's suppose get VI marks for this and V1 marks for this and V2 marks for this. So now the setting was like this. If you uh, answer the question one first, then what will you get? If you answer it correctly, then you will get V1. Okay, if you answer it correctly, then only will you be able to answer the second question. Otherwise, you won't be given the chance to answer the second question. So if you answer this correctly, then you will move here and then you will answer the question two. Okay, and uh, also in the vice versa, if you answer the question two first, then uh, in order to answer the question one, the question two's answer should be right. Okay, so the random, I said you that the problem that uh, now we have is, so with the probability P1, you will answer question one correctly with answer p uh, probability p2 you will answer question two correctly that is the probability that we had okay so now if you say expected uh, marks so expected marks uh, so, uh, we have to calculate basically expect marks so here either you can get zero marks you can get v1 marks let's suppose you chose the uh, uh, to answer first question and you got it correct and the second question was wrong you'll, you'll get v1 marks or you'll get v2 marks let's suppose you chose to answer second question first and then you got v2 and the third question was wrong or you will get v1 plus v2 or this thing can happen in two uh, two ways and if you chose to, uh, to answer first question then and you got it right and then followed by the second question and then you also got that right or it can happen in second way also where you chose to answer the second question first then also uh, you gave the right answer for that and followed by the question one you also gave the right answer for that these are the total uh, uh, total v uh, values that you can get either you can get zero and you answer this can also happen in you uh, chose question one and you gave wrong answer you chose question two to answer first you get wrong answer okay how will this happen so this uh, this may happen let's suppose you chose to answer q1 first and you got it right q2 was wrong and this you chose to answer q2 first then q1 was wrong so here q1 followed by q2 and both of them were right or q2 followed by q1 both of them were right something like this now we have to see expected marks so that's our question so if you uh, calculate the expected marks now we'll deal the cases separately so we'll co compute the expected the expected marks okay now the first case is let's suppose we'll take we, we attempted question one first okay now we'll see that so we have to we have to see if we attempted question one so if you see question one so this can happen this thing can happen there so this thing can happen there there this is no choice and this can this can happen there now we'll have we have these three values that will be taken okay so with zero so the so how to write this expectations now so i got uh, these three cases okay i have this zero then i have this v1 and i have this v1 plus v2 so these are the values i can get so I, how, how can i get zero value if the question one was wrong so what is the probability i'll get this wrong so because i have p1 of uh, giving the answer right, right answer so this is one minus p1 so now i think this is not required because it like, again get the value zero so we can remove this so how to get this v1 so i'll get the uh, uh, the first question should be right and the second and the second question that i'll get is wrong so first question is right is p1 second question is wrong is 1 minus p2 okay that's how i multiplied this 1 minus p2 p1 and v1 so how i can get this so I, both of them should be right p1 by p2 so this will add this is what i'm computing i'm computing expectation expectation when i give question one's answer correctly how many of you understood this now I'll explain it again. Mm, Rian, have you understood this? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if you see the second scenario, if I give the question two's answer first, so what are the possible outputs again now? So I can get zero if my question two is wrong. I can get V2 or I can get both of these. So okay, I'll again write this. So I, for question two, I can get zero. I can get V2. I can get V1 plus V2. Okay, how when will I get zero? If I get the question two wrong, that is one minus p two. Okay, this is add because I'm just adding these. I'm computing the expectation. So here I can remove this because it can multiply with zero. When will I get v two? So I should get the uh, second question right first. So I got it right, and the first question I'll get wrong. Okay, wrong probability is this much. Okay, then multiplied with the total score I'll get, and for this again the same thing. This is p two p one. Okay, which order should you answer the questions now depends on this. So this is quantity one and this is quantity two. So which of them is greater? 
so you'll put accordingly so this is the quantity one just let me this is the value that you will get expected value if you answer the question q1 first followed by q2 uh, if even you got that right and this is this is the amount of money or the marks that you will get if you answer the q2 first and both of these are just expectation they are expectations this is a generic answer now you can just put values to this p1 and v1 and you will get the answer accordingly okay is this clear nice that's what the like expectations mean by basically you get the expected values from this this is the question uh, that we did and uh, i think i put in the group also the 2021 gate asked a simple version of this question you just have to put values here okay moving on now let's solve some more questions so as to get the hold of these expectations okay and after the after once you got the expectation and we'll uh, have a thorough study of uh, many what's called as linearity of expectations okay and these things like that and first let's get thorough with the questions question is like this so there's a game called a chuck and luck chuck chuck and luck something like this. this is a game so there is a board like this so there is a board that's why these gambling players if they are good at probability they know if i can win or if i can lose because they can evaluate the conditions by using probability and they'll see if the odds are in my favor should i even play the game if they even find a slightest problem in the game and they'll somehow manipulate it and, and uh, they'll make the casinos run out of money because that they know they know the probability game and that's why usually these casino players while they design a game they hire these probability experts tell that this game should always be uh, sort of uh, giving us the benefit so giving the casinos the benefit if it if if it has some problem with the game and then a guy comes he knows probably he'll evaluate the game and uh, he'll loot all the money from the casino so this is the game so here you have numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 let's only have this much and it's the simplest version i am now meeting otherwise okay there is a board like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 so there are six numbers written on the board okay then what you have is a player uh, uses here some money and he puts his money on to uh, onto one of the uh, maybe multiple of these let's suppose somebody puts uh, multiple players can play this game uh, all together it's not necessary that only one player will play some many players will play somebody will put their money on this number one somebody will put uh, the money on the number three okay somebody will put the number on the money four something like this okay they are putting the money Let, let's suppose they are putting one units now three dies are old so three dies are old so we have three dice they're old okay and dice are to be considered as fair dice so we have dice now you know that the dice will get numbers from one to six with equal probability now uh, if let's suppose i chose one if i chose number one so what will happen is i'll see if the if any of these dice came up with number one like the uh, the top most face if it came with a number one i'll get one unit of money corresponding to each die let's suppose if this die showed one so i'll get one unit if two die show one i'll get two units of money let's suppose it's in dollars let me write in dollars or maybe hundreds of dollars whatever it is we'll just make it simple one dollar so i'm putting one dollar on this number one so what will happen is three dice will be rolled so then we'll see what are, what is the output of these dice if it is one and one and five on these numbers so what will happen is i'll get two units back one unit i had that okay that is my one unit but i'll get additional two units Okay, similarly, if I had, let's suppose now, all three dice show my number 111, I'll get three units. If no die showed my number, then basically I'll, get, I'll lose this dollar. I'll lose this one dollar. So when will I lose? If all, doll, uh, if all the dice that were uh, thrown, they did not show my number up, then I'll lose. Okay. Now the possibility is that either I'll lose one dollar, okay, or I'll earn one dollar. I can also earn two dollars. I can also earn three dollars. How, how will I... Uh, lose one dollar because I am just throwing a die. No die. I, uh, my number did not appear on any die, so I am just losing a dollar. In the second scenario, what I am doing is one die showed my number, so I am winning one dollar. Two die showed my number, I am winning two dollars, and three die showed my number, I am winning three dollars. Now the question is, should I play this game? Okay, I mean, should I play this game? And if I play, how much will I uh, uh, like win or how much will I lose? You have to basically compute expectations. I made this problem really simple for you. I, I almost solved half the problem. I'll give you just two, three minutes to think about this problem. Okay, let's resume this. 
Zakir help me through. I'll do it and Zakir will help me in the calculations. So now I am saying that yes, this is my random variable. I can call this random variable x. So my random variable can take values minus one, one, two, three. This is basically my earnings. Okay. So now I know that I have to give probability that x takes value minus one. When will I lose? Okay. When will I lose basically this game? Okay. I am throwing uh, three dice and none of the dice shows my number. Okay. From three dice, I'll have to choose no dice because when will I win the money? So I have these three dice, one, two, and three dice. So I'll win money if one of the dice shows my number. So that's basically uh, at least one should show and then I'll win one dollar. If two shows, I'll win two dollars. If three do shows, I'll win three dollars. So if you see, this experiment basically is a Bernoulli random variable. <coughs> Each other trial is a Bernoulli random variable. And whole of the experiment, if you see it, this can be seen as a binomial distribution. So in each trial, I can either, uh, either win or I can lose. When will I win? So I'll win if my number appears. Okay, if my number did not appear, so I lose. So there is success or failure in each of the trial. So I am throwing one die, I am throwing second die, I am throwing third die. Or I can think uh, of this, uh, rolling three dice together. Okay, the same things are there. So if you roll these three dice together, or if you roll these dice one by one, that's equivalent. So if you see each of the trial is a Bernoulli random variable. And whole of this is a binomial distribution. Now when will I win? So I'll win with the probability of one by six. That's all because I'm just choosing one number. And what is the uh, losing probability? So losing probability will be 5 by 6. Other numbers will be 5 by 6. Zakir, are you with me? Yes, sir. So this win probability for each the die. So when will I win for uh, for one die? So that probability is 1 by 6 because that number should be my number which it, which it rolled. Because each of the probability of the number is 1 by 6. We are considering that die to be fair. Now if you see this, all the three dice should basically give me different, give me some numbers which are not my numbers. Okay, then three choose zero ways because I'm choosing no die among that because why I'm choosing no die and because no none of the die got my number. So what is the probability of three choose zero? So I'll write uh, the winning probability. What is my winning probability? My winning probability is one by six. That is raised to power zero because I am winning zero times. And what is the losing probability? Losing probability is five by six. And uh, 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 how many times I'm uh, willing? I'm uh, failing three times. So this is the probability p is equal to minus one. So I'll just separate this one out because this is really important. I don't want to delete it. So I'm keeping it here. Similarly, probability. Now, if you see that now, it will become easy for you. Probability that I will win a dollar. Okay, how, when, when is that? Because if I at least on one die I showed, on at least one trial I got the success. So that is three choose one. That can happen in any three ways. Any three of dies can, show, can appear. Okay, then what is the probability? One by six. 5 by 6. Now you can, you can like have this autopilot mode now. Now you don't really even think. If you understood this thing, so easily you will be able to calculate everything. Probability x is equal to, that is 3 choose 2. 1 by 6, 2, 5 by 6, 1. Probability you will win 3 dollars. That is 3 choose 3, 1 by 6 raised to power 3, 5 by 6 raised to power 0. And now you will get some probability. So here, you are getting 125 divided by 126. So here you will get 75 by 216. This is 216, sorry, 216, 216. So this is 15 by 216. And this over here is 1 by 216. Now you have to compute the expectations. How do you compute expectations? So expectation of x is nothing but write the number. The first number is I'll win. I'll basically lose that is minus one that is multiplied by 125 by 216 that's this number the probability of this so you know the formula expand that is summation of xi probability of x takes this value xi that's what I'm writing over here I can keep it in separate I'll just have this formula over here okay so now this is minus one multiplied by 125 and then plus the second number is I'll earn one dollar. That is one. And what is the probability of getting this one? That is seventy-five divided by two one six plus. And then third number is two. I can earn two dollars. What is the probability of getting two dollars? That is fifteen by two one six. Okay, plus. I can get three dollars. What is the probability of that? That is one by two one six. One divided by two one six. Okay, so if you compute the expectation, that comes out to be minus 17 divided by 
टू वन सिक्स ओके सो वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस सो द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस इज बेसिकली आउट ऑफ टू सिक्सटीन गेम्स ओके यू विल लूज सेवनटीन डॉलर शुड यू प्ले दिस गेम out of 216 out of 216 games you are losing 17 dollars so overall you are in loss okay so basically you will not play this game though so this game is uh, basically serving the casinos so there is a high probability that if you keep on if you keep on uh, like uh, sort of playing this game you will basically lose the money okay that's why we got this negative number if it was slightly positive then i would have told you okay play the game you can play this so how many of you understood the problem and then how many of you understood how did we brought it in the mathematical world and try to model the problem problem was just this this was your problem this is the problem that we handled and then we how do we brought these random variables and then how we evaluate the problem okay are you comfortable with the binary now the only thing you have to see is okay you have to think about okay one how is the, the one trial behaving let's suppose in here you were seeing uh, the whole thing was actually Uh, either failure or success in one trial then we were doing three trials and you you have to model them and there is only one thing by which you learn by solving a lot of real world problems by using probability you cannot get better than better on this uh, without solving problems you can you may know every probability theory you may know every concept of probability but the uh, point comes how can you apply this probability in the real world the only application part is where you know how to model these problems okay this is one expectation again let's do one more problem so that you have a little bit hold of this and then we can move on to what's called as a what's called as variance and we'll see different properties of expectations again the problem goes like this how many of you have studied genetics because i wanted to show you the real world problems i did not want you to bore with the probability anybody has some idea about genetics okay so we have biology majors here so there was a guy named as grigor john mendel okay the, he Uh, came up with this theory of inheritance a little bit background about that so what he did is this is a really interesting story we see he was very he was ahead of his time uh, so he was performing experiments on, on these pea plants okay he had his uh, sort of farm or whatever we call so he had that and he was performing some experiments on that and he wanted to see how does the different flowers behave Okay, what he found is that if he took tall uh, these tall pea plants, let's suppose we'll write them tall plants, and then we have dwarf plants or short plants. Let's write short short plants. He had these two types of plants, and what he saw is he was randomly cross pollinating them, cross pollinating. Just a background story. so what he uh, saw that there is he saw some behavior in the plants and be, uh, and um, uh, because of that behavior he concluded two things he said there are two types of genes so he said some genes will be responsible for tall behavior and short behavior so there will be uh, sort of uh, genes responsible for that there are two behavior of genes now behavior of genes so what's the behavior a gene can be recessive a biology lesson for all of you guys or a gene can be dominant okay a gene can be recessive or it can be a dominant gene that is the thing that he discovered so what he wrote is he said uh, now let's suppose if you pollinate these plants let's suppose this tall or short this is a property okay basically height of a plant so this height is associated with two genes okay so that gene let's suppose that gene is called as a1 a2 these are two genes which are responsible for the height now th these genes can take value tall 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 and this and this the small letter over here the small t this is a recessive gene so small case letters which i am writing is a, a recessive gene again see how much difficult it is for me to convey this problem first that's why i said domain knowledge is very important so if you are solving anything you must have domain knowledge that's why i am just giving this background then we have this dominant gene so dominant gene is written as capital letter dominant gene okay so what i am saying is this is called as this is purity so this is pure tall because bo dominant gene basically means uh, if let's suppose we have this tt the do, here we have this dominant t so this means that uh, anyways one of the uh, genes which is dominant will show the show the behavior okay dominant gene shows the express the behavior in hybrid situation 
if it's a hybrid case also it will show the behavior it will express the that's why it's called dominant okay this is called as dominance by morphology okay it is showing let's suppose we have uh, in uh, in our eye color the gene responsible for that if we have we go the dominant gene so that will express itself dominant gene basically shows which express itself and uh, uh, recessive gene basically means uh, it will uh, somehow dominant gene will mask it so in order to show this in order to have recessive behavior recessive trait so both the genes will be recessive then only it will show this tt basically means short okay and this t again it will be tall this will be again tall this will be pure tall why is it tall because there are two genes there is a short uh, recessive gene and there is a tall dominant gene so now you can clearly see that why is this tall how many of you understood the background story i like vaguely sort of put it around i think biology people will laugh at me but it's okay okay so that is the background story how he performed this experiments so there is something called as dominant gene and there is something called recessive gene dominant is one which expresses in a term in even presence of uh, recessive gene also so a recessive gene is that which only expresses if there is uh, and the recessive gene with it so the problem goes like this if you understood all of these things now i'll i'll tell you the problem the problem is that let's suppose eye color or left handedness what are the problem eye color it is classified based on the pair of genes let's say it's a very simple problem eye color there are there is a pair of gene responsible pair of genes pair of genes responsible for this okay so d let's suppose this d is our dominant gene and r is our recessive gene now so there are these things so if you see d d d r r d r r okay so this here it will be dominant 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 again it this is only recessive gene okay this is called as pure dominance okay this is called as pure recessive gene or the, these two are called a hybrid they are hybrid traits now what i'll say you is so let's suppose a parent these are two parents and one parent was having uh, pure dominance he was having this dd and one parent was having recessive gene both of the recessive genes these were two parents now you know that so a, ch a child will get one gene from each of the parent okay and he can get any possibility among these four combinations all of these are dominant and this is a recessive gene so let's suppose these have they had four children if the parents had four children okay now you tell me what's the probability that these three out of four children this three out of four will have outward appearance as dominant will have outward appearance as dominant kis kis question samjha tell me this there is a bit shady because you have to also understand this a little bit of genetic theory inheritance and this stuff how many of you understood the question tell me this nobody should i repeat the question so what i am saying is so if you if you understood whole the theory behind this genetics a little bit of theory that i said so what i am saying is uh, now we have parents two parents parent 1 and parent 2 these are two parents okay this is parent 1 and parent 2 one is dominant parent okay and one is recessive parent and children you know receive uh, this uh, gene from each the parents so if a child gets born let's suppose this is eye color gene so he'll receive one from this and he'll receive one gene from the mother and one gene from the father now what i'm saying is four children were born to these parents okay so four child uh, children were born to these parents so what i'm saying is you have to tell me the probability the probability that three out of these four children will have the appearance as dominant okay this is the this is the pro you have to tell me like uh, if uh, in these four children so for each of the children this is the possibilities they'll get something among this so what is the success here success basically is if if he gets a dominant gene and dominant gene will express so let me let me solve this question so that you get hang of this problem so now again if you see a uh, whole of this problem will fit into the binomial random distribution or binomial random variable why because uh, birth of each children can be th uh, thought as a trial okay each of this is a trial so success basically is he should get dominant gene okay getting a dominant gene is success getting a dominant gene is our success okay birth of each child is a trial now so now how many trials we have we have four trials okay because we have four children were born there were there are four trials now getting a dominant gene is our success so what is the probability of getting a dominant gene because you know that 
if you if you write this this is dominant this is pure recessive genes the possibilities are dr no 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 this should be uh, hybrid parents dr and dr let's suppose then only these are possibilities sorry for this so the parents basically are d dr and dr both the parents were hybrid then only these uh, possibilities are there okay then we'll get dd we'll get dr we'll get rd and we'll get rr so these are four four possibilities now this is our success so here this is success and this is the failure I took an example like this. If uh, some feminist people saw it, he'll say that birth of a child is saying failure. <laughs> so success basically means if there is a dominant gene. So these are the parents that we got. Okay, both the parents are hybrid. Okay, now if you see that, what is the probability of success? The probability of success is three out of four. Okay, what is the probability of failure? One out of four. Okay, now four trials have been done. Now what I'm the, uh, I have to calculate what's the probability that three out of four will have outward appearance dominant. Again, it's a experiment. Three out of four. Three choose four, and then what's the probability of success? Three by four raised to power three, and one by four raised to power one. This is the probability. How many of you understood it now? Wasn't it easy? This is four choose three. Sorry, and this I think is equal twenty seven by four sixty four. Again, I am reiterating this thing. Uh, learning the probability is not a hard part, but understanding the real world problem then formulating it as probability, okay, that is the hard part. Okay, that's why I'll recommend you a book also, Probability Through Problems. Probability Through Problems. It's a really nice book. So what you have to do is there will be some real world problems. So you have real world problems, and then you will have to model it. And this modeling part is a bit, I'll say, difficult. Understanding probability is not difficult. Modeling is difficult. Once you model the problem in a right way, and then th this is nothing but a game of mathematics. Now you can apply your maths all all together. So whatever algebra you have studied, you'll just add, uh, subtract because we have been discussing probability since last ten lectures or so. So your uh, experts are done now that and there are simple laws of probability. You can uh, you can just manipulate by using the math. But this is the difficult part. This over here, this modeling of the probability problems. That's why the more problems you do, the more uh, hang of these things you will get. Okay. So here again, we have done some problems and we have seen where the expectations are used. And slowly in the next class, we'll uh, in detail learn about expectations and variance. And then probably we'll move on to the uh, continuous random variables. And after that, we'll see the different distributions. And then we are probably done with at least the distributions by a probability. Then there are some joint probability, marginal probability, and different inequalities that we'll look at once uh, we are uh, done with these at least. Okay, if you have any questions, I am willing to take that. I am stopping the recording over here.